you, party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week on the show, I am joined by Ray from Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn for a game of Tech Noir. Tech Noir is hard-boiled role-playing in a high-tech future. It combines the terrifying technological possibilities of classic cyberpunk with the monolithic organizations and driven protagonists of classic film noir. It's great. We've played it on the show before. I really love it, and I cannot wait for you to hear this episode. You can find more information about Tech Noir in the show notes. Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn is a heavily edited Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play that blends the world of actual play and audio drama into something truly unique. Check it out at Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn. That's T-A-I-L-S from the Dark Dragons Inn.co.uk. Real quick before we dive in, though, a special thank you goes out to Kirby and to Simon Perryman for their support on Patreon. Thank you both so much. Your support makes all of this and more possible. If you enjoy the show, you should consider backing us on Patreon. Patreon backers get access to bonus materials, mini podcasts, and interviews. And Patreon dollars help pay for hosting fees, equipment costs, convention appearances, live shows, all that kind of cool stuff. You can find more information at patreon.com slash partyofonepodcast. And with all that out of the way, let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am sitting down with Ray. Ray, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. Thanks so much for inviting me. So, before we dive in, why don't you take a moment to tell the listeners at home any projects you might be working on that you might want them to know about. Sure. So, uh, I'm the host and Game Master for a podcast called Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn. That's T-A-I-L-S, because puns are great. Um, as you'll, you'll see throughout this episode. Um, it's an audio drama style podcast. Uh, we have a very diverse cast and... It's driven by tabletop role-playing games, but I edit out pretty much all of the roles and rule-talking, so you just get the story. Uh, the only other things that I would like to talk about is there is a, an upcoming charity event on April 18th um, that I probably will be DMing for. Uh, and if you are a podcaster yourself, come check out the RPG Cast's Discord forum. Uh, it's pretty active, and there's a lot of good people there. It's a really good Discord. It is a very good community. I highly recommend it. I hang out there a lot. So this week, we are playing Tech Noir. It is a game of hard-boiled stories in a high-tech world. Um, It is cyberpunk film noir. It is one of my favorite games. I love it a lot, and I cannot wait to dive in. So why don't you introduce us to your character this week? Uh, I am playing Elena, uh, Handel Joe Novak. She is an ex-security an ex-security manager, I guess? Uh, She started out life as a bodyguard for a high-ranking general in the army. Um, She likes to play along the lines of being a personal assistant, so she had a lot of training in the field of escort services. Um, When that eventually petered out, she started a private security firm, but it didn't go so great. And uh, now she's kind of just living day to day. Um, she is working for, uh, she is working for a large manufacturing firm in the Singapore sling. Uh, Singapore has become one of the busiest ports in the world. It has become a massive manufacturing center for the entire planet. It is the centerpiece of the Singapore Sling, a 50-kilometer-long railgun that launches cargo into orbit. Uh, It is a place of extreme wealth disparity. You know, you have the corporate executives and wealthy citizens in the upper crust who have taken on this sort of neo-Victorian fashion, and they are straight up, like, French aristocrating it. And then you have the everyone else is fighting for basically nothing. You know, uh, there's tremendous... uh, We get these big sweeping overhead shots of, like, crates coming off of floating hover ships and police officers grilling uh, shipping crews, demanding permits. Just sinking through the smog. (laughs) Yeah, and it's just... it's, It's raining. It's always raining, and it's always so hot because of massive climate change that it's always steaming. Mm -hmm. it's and therefore anybody with money you probably spend a lot of time in 
like underground transit and air conditioned interior like like anywhere dark and cool basically yeah you you kind of have a little bit of access because you work for uh we'll call it nexus international because you work for nexus international you have a little bit you're 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 used to spending time in office buildings in places that are comfortable (laughs) there are not a lot of those in the singapore sling Uh, our story begins where are you tell me where you where we find you when you get a call when you get a call from your loan shark when I get you owe them some money mm-hmm. um I think I'm probably in what kind of um not accounts for what it's the word I'm looking for the place that I essentially treat as my office um which is my living room sure um but it's it's got a nice glass door that I barricaded shut a while ago, um, and so it's it's only glass on the front side, and it looks like it goes into a shadowy, uh, a shadowy room, but in actual fact, there's just boards over the entire glass area. Um, and I'm probably just looking over some files from the last pithy job I managed to put together. What was that? What was that last pithy job? Like, what what are you what are you coming off of? What was the big success that you just had? Oh, I just had a big success. I'm not entirely sure it went that well, honestly. I feel like um, I was hired for what I expected to be a, a high... I, I was hired to protect someone who was attending what I expected to be a ritzy gala kind of thing, as they had a lot of wealth about them, and as it turns out, it was just a really low-rate auction for some kind of um, historical items that mm. they just couldn't really have cared less about. You get a call. I, I was overdressed when I got there. Oh, for sure. Was yeah, that unfortunate. was unfortunate. You were dressed for a, a soiree, and this was mm-hmm. this was neo Victorian, basically tourists bidding yeah. on like skulls. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> You're coming off of that. We maybe see uh, the auction paddle on one of your shelves. And you get a video call. Your TV kind of like an alert pops up in the corner that you're getting a call from Shane Harvey. I run my hands through my short hair and just sigh heavily. I'm not sure I'm prepared to deal with his shit today, but... I give it a minute, and assuming he doesn't just go away, I pick it up. Uh, his Hi, Shane. F- what do you want? His face fills your TV screen, and he's got that big shit-eating grin, and mm. he's just, Joe. Joe, it's wonderful to see- it's wonderful to hear you. How did the uh, how did the auction job go? You know damn well how it went. Come on. I, I do want? know how damn I don't well have time for this. <laughs> I do indeed know how no uh, I do indeed know damn well how it went. Uh and that's actually why I'm calling cuz uh it seems like that was a pretty profitable, uneventful job, not a lot of uh expenses to recoup. So uh seems like this yeah, is I mean, a good time to right. revisit my uh that money that you owe me. I mean, I'm not sure I can cover the lot, but I can make a small contribution. I'm sure I could work something out. How much are you looking for? Uh, payment in full would be preferred, but um, we can make a deal. We can always make a deal. Mm, you and your jobs are never really... You know they're not my speed. What? What is it? I'm not selling for you. I, I wouldn't ask you to. I know your specialties. I know your expertise. That's my expertise, Joe. You have to understand my expertise is knowing your expertise and how we can meet in the middle. I'm a people person. <laughs> she just rolls her eyes. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a real people person. You know a lot of people. I get it. So, listen, I have... I need a bodyguard for a job. What kind of job? Just a very simple, uh, 
a very simple meeting between uh, interested parties exchanging information. I need somebody to be there just to make sure that it doesn't go to shit. Can you be there to make sure it doesn't go to shit? So long as all that's being exchanged is information, you've got me. How much is it worth to you? It is, to me, oh, five creds. Half of what you owe me. Yeah, that works out. And I'll drop you another two as well to contribute. Perfect. You're making progress. Doesn't that feel good? She grits her teeth and smiles. Well, anything for a partner? Anything for a partner. Great. I'll forward you the details and we'll get and and uh I'll get my money ASAP. This is working out wonderfully. And he I clicks off your TV it. shuts off. And aye, aye, aye. <laughs> a few minutes later, some information pops up on your screen. Alrighty. I think at this point I've just gotten up from the couch and I've have I'm having everything forwarded to the screen uh in in my eye because I've got better things to do than sit around and wait. So a few minutes later you get a call from your you get information. You're going to be accompanying um of all people, you're gonna be accompanying uh Shia Wu. Shia is one of the CEOs of uh, Nexus International. She is somebody that you've worked with before. When is the last time that you crossed paths with Shia? Uh, it's she. She's the CEO. Yeah, she is a okay. she is a high up, and Nexus is an is a. Uh, they handle a little bit of everything. They are a a manufacturing and shipping company mm-hmm. that is overseeing a lot of things. In... What exactly do you think I do for Nexus, or is I, that for me to? <laughs> that's kind of for you to figure out. You, I okay. figure, as a bodyguard, you've probably worked for them as a bodyguard, but you tell me. Yeah. I think, given that I was originally setting up, like, or trying to set up a private security firm, I think they probably hired me on as the person in charge of their security. Once, I, I sort of resisted. Maybe it was even a merger, like, th- they kind of approached me being like, well, your company's not doing great, you're mm-hmm. clearly not going to survive this, but we'll hire your staff, you know, all two of them, and you can run our security to operate things, because you've fallen on hard times because you don't have the connections, we have the connections, and you've got the skill set we need. Um, interesting that she didn't come to me directly herself, though. No, um, that is that but, is interesting. So, I'd say the last time I saw her was probably six months. Uh, was just reviewing. It, it probably wasn't even a direct job with her so much as um, going over the spec for the latest security setup that they have in whatever building, mm-hmm. um, and the layout and what sort of guard rotation they should have, and the fact that I was trying to push that they needed to hire more people because it's unreasonable to expect this number of people to cover that many shifts when it's your security, but they weren't really interested because they're a business and they don't give a shit how many people have to work 60 hours a week. Um, Yeah, so I'd say that's probably the last time I saw her. Uh, I'm I'm not convinced we're on great terms, but she probably just thinks of me as an employee and I think of her as my shit-eating boss, so... Sure. (laughs) Interesting that she didn't come to you directly. Um, interesting that she would go through a loan shark. You, you get the vibe that she probably has the money to hire someone directly to, you know. Mm-hmm. Things aren't. Things are starting to not add up. Yeah, for sure. Um, Whatever this is, it's probably off the books. Right. Uh, they give you a meeting location. It is deep in the upper crust, you know, where the Neo-Victorians hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me what your normal outfit looks like, and tell me how it changes when you have to go into the up the deep into the upper crust. So uh, the upper crust is the uh, neo Victorian fashion sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. I think as often as possible, 
whatever I'm wearing is just incredibly comfortable. Um, especially if I'm not on a job. It's the closest to modern day sweats and a hoodie mm-hmm. as possible. Um, I think I try to play down the overly sexual, effeminate vibe. So um, I haven't mentioned, but Elena is, I'd say, six foot two, um, very, very muscular. But I don't know if you've ever seen any of the um, Zaria cosplayers from, um, I think it's Zariah from Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pink, yeah. So it's, she's built very similarly. There's a model uh, called Stefania mm-hmm. who um, does a uh, very good cosplay of her. And that's kind of physically what I was thinking is mm-hmm. Stefania. Uh, so just very muscular, but also quite lean. Um, a little bit on the larger side, but just because she's solid muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if she wears anything form fitting, Oversexualized would probably be the casual observer's opinion. She has a cybernetic arm that is um, has a synth skin, so it just is built into her body. It's very discreet. Um, so in general, she tries to, when she's not on the job in any way, she tries to play it down, be as subtle and, and unnoticeable as possible. Um, but if she's going to be on the job... She probably throws on her Kevlar vest um, underneath. I think she'd kind of go the route of tuxedo suit, mm-hmm. but with like a sort of um, maybe the jacket over the top would be, I think, the equivalent of a T-shirt dress if it was a suit. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I, got, I got where you're at. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like, uh, c- kind of coat and tails, but... Instead of tails, it's uh, frilled out on the sides, so she has multi- not quite petticoat layers, but she has some flowing um, frills from the sides, but it's also a very form-fitting suit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say the jacket is quite loose in the elbows and in the shoulder as well to allow for flexibility and um, the ability for her cybernetic arm to move freely, um, but also in general just to have good flowing of movement. And, and as we enter into the upper crust, that's, you know, your outfit kind of stands out a little bit, but like, that's the aesthetic everyone is going for. There's a lot of uh, very frilled out, very poofy skirts and and waistcoats, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of uh, Queen Elizabethan collars, oh, people or <laughs> people wearing just caked on makeup, and it mm-hmm. all looks very... It doesn't look so much Victorian as it does, like, Victorian cosplayers. Yeah. It's like, this is what we imagined it looked like. You know, because everyone in that era was super wealthy and dressed like the royals, right? Yes. Um. (laughs) And we finally... You finally get to the meeting place. Uh, It is the lobby of some industrial complex one of these massive arcologies, you see the rain beating on windows above you. And you see Shia sitting and she is wearing 20th century, like a 20th century business suit. She is consciously dressed way down. You know, the pictures you've mm-hmm. seen of her, she goes, she's a style icon. And now she is just wearing a very, a very conservative suit. Okay. And she's looking around very anxiously. I think I just hang back out of sight for a bit and just watch her to get an idea of what's going on. Um, See if I notice anything about what she's wearing or if she's looking... Does she uh, appear to be looking in any kind of direction specifically or is she just anxiously looking around in general? Um... I'm going to call this uh, an action and say that you're trying to put an adjective of, like, observed on her. Something that you can tweak to, like, pull out information. Yeah. So I'm going to... So we'll we'll go through the action process. That sounds good. Let me pull up the player's guide. So I can remember Um, exactly how it goes. (laughs) Yeah. I imagine that will be a detect, which will be really simple, because I don't have any of that. 
Uh, you always have you have at least one of everything. Oh no, that's what I mean. But I yeah. meant no additionals. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that happens is all of your push dice. You start with three of them. All of your push dice are charged. So you have three push dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a number of action dice equal to your detect, which is one. If you'd like to add a push dice, you can add one for every adjective, object, or tag that helps you. Uh, sure. You don't have any negative uh, any negative adjectives, so you don't add any hurt dice. Okay. Um, yeah, I think in this instance, I'm just going to roll the uh, one for the detect. It's not particularly important to me. <laughs> I just was curious. Uh, that's a five. So, what counts as successes? Um, um, so, so your high roll. So your roll is a five. Yeah. So I'm going to roll a. I'm going to roll against you. This is opposed. Sure, sure. Um, and if you get, if I get a four, or if I get a four point one or less, uh, then you succeed, and you get to put an adjective on her. You succeed. I got a three. My high roll is a three. So you've got an adjective on her. You've got her. You've got her in in your sights. You've got a keen, a close eye on her. Now you get to decide, like, how much of an eye on how studied she is, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, you can make it fleeting, which is it stays in place until she basically takes an action to kind of shake you off. Uh, you can spend a push dice, which hands it to me, and yeah. I can then use it to hurt you later to make mm-hmm. it sticky, which until she takes active effort to, like, shake you off or distract you or, like, undermine sure. you. Or you can make it locked for two push dice, which is permanent. Okay. Like, uh, so would uh, would I be able to call it analyzed? Because yeah. I'm, yeah, so um, I'm happy to keep it temporary uh, okay. and just put on analyzed on the basis that I'm just trying to get a sense of what, perhaps what I think she's going through or what she's, um, you know, what, if I'm trying to work out how anxious she is or get a sense of her uh, overall demeanor and stuff like that, I think analyzed is appropriate. She um, is distinctly anxious you notice that the what you what you notice by like analyzing her from a distance is that she is not meeting anyone's eye you know she's mm-hmm. getting some sideways glances from some neo victorians walking around in their big outfits and she's just playing it very calm she's on uh she's on her phone like she's she's making a hollow call mm-hmm. you can't see who she's talking to sure but she's like looking around. She's checking her watch. She clearly, she's clearly waiting for something. Presumably you. You just seem so, yeah. And um, but she's clearly like trying not to attract attention. But she's clearly looking uncomfortable in her surroundings. Cool. Uh, in that case, yeah. Once once I've watched her for a while, and other than this call, she doesn't appear to um, be doing anything out of the ordinary. I'll just sort of wander over to her. And kind of quite directly, actually, um, while she's looking the other way or uh, not paying as much attention to her surroundings as she perhaps should, I just stroll up and say, you didn't think you could wear something just a little bit more on board? She is already up and walking as you're saying that. And you hear from like a step or two, like a step or two ahead of you, she says, we're not hanging out here. Just move. All right. And I follow. I, I get within. Uh, I'd say I'm not going to walk right up next to her. I'm just going to walk like a couple of feet behind um, and just follow her, keeping an eye out around her mm-hmm. and just go straight into job mode of uh, staying alert and keeping an eye out for any threats, because I assume that this is what I'm here to do. Uh, this is definitely going to be another roll. Somebody's going to try and put an adjective on you. Okay. Uh, so, your push dice, your three push dice are recharged. Yep. So, uh, your push dice are recharged. Uh, this is going to be a prowl roll. So, you're going to assemble dice for your prowl verb. And if <laughs> you have any adjectives, objects, or tags that can help you, you can sp- you can use push dice for that. Sure. I'll, I'll um, tell you, you're rolling against two dice right now. Yeah, okay. So, uh, obviously I have uh, a lot. 
Um, okay. That is my default. So uh, I use a push dice in relation to the tags, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to use my thermal imaging in my cyber eye and my propensity for being alert. Um, okay. To, and then obviously two push dice, uh, to keep an eye out and just watch everything that is going on around her. Okay. Um, up to a reasonable range. Okay. <laughs> so it's just the the number on the highest dice, or if I have like two sixes or two fives or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have one six of the three dice. So I have a two, a five, and a six. Okay. Um, well, I messed this up. So what we'll say is actually because you not only managed to uh, evade, if you'd like to put an adjective of like spotted or something on your pursuer... <laughs> In response, you can do um, that Yeah, as well. absolutely. I'll, I'll say um, spotted is fine. Do you want fleeting or do you want fleeting or sticky? Because you have one push dice left. Um, I'd say fleeting for now. Okay, great. Because uh, well, I don't need going... to have a casual glance to know that I'm being <laughs> to know for sure that there is someone following us. So. There is someone. There's someone following you in uh, lovely evening wear. You see a a young woman, like nineteen maybe, mm-hmm. um, in what is clearly what you pick up on is that like there is someone here wearing uh Victorian evening wear that is not tailored, right? You you see that someone's wearing something that is a little bit too big, sure. and they're kind of swimming in it a little bit. So it's likely they've picked it up just to be more discreet while they're here yeah okay. and they are kind of like looking they're kind of like leaning on a pole fo- like fake talking on their phone watching you very very uh closely watching me or watching shia uh watching shia okay but you definitely notice that you are being watched sure but she then um kind of like kicks off of kicks off of the wall that she's leaning back on and just like blends into the crowd taking an action to give to take away your spotted basically she kind of like looks like sees you and like fades away yeah so uh noticing this person um joe speaks up and she, uh, how far away are we from where we're going exactly? Because I think we've already got company. Uh, not far, and she, like, jams some buttons on a keypad, and a door opens up, and you get to a parking garage. She takes you to, uh, her driver is waiting. She, and, and the three of you, or the two of you pile into this kind of, like, nice limousine and start driving. Okay. And you're in traffic because there's always traffic because there's a lot of people <laughs> trying to go a lot of places and do a lot of work because everyone is always working. Yeah. That tracks. So what are you doing as you're sitting in this car? Um. So just out of curiosity, before you said uh, that you messed it up, how did you mess it up? Because I'm just, oh. well, I want to know exactly how it works. Oh, uh, somebody <laughs> was trying to put an adjective on you, so you didn't uh-huh. need to roll. You just needed to, uh, that was your reaction number, just needed to be that uh, flat number. Okay. And the so... first place that you spent just increased that number. Oh, okay. But then because you rolled dice, I just w- ruled it yeah, as a, sec- <laughs> a second action to put a second adjective on the table. Okay, that's fine. I was just a bit confused. Um, Okay, cool. So, in that case, um, I am going to take my little spider cam, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to set it up so it's just sitting in the back window of the car. Uh, It's linked, so I'm going to have it projecting whatever it's seeing to the ocular screen in my cyber eye, and I am just going to be Observing in the opposite direction and just keeping an eye out in general. Okay. Um, um, check. It's a traffic jam. You just see cars. There's nothing really distinct about them. But like right yep. now, it's everything seems fine. 
Yeah. But you notice that you're you're leaving you are leaving the upper crust. And this is when Shia starts to like look you over and scowl of like you look ridiculous. So, um in this case, I once I realize that we're heading out of the district, I'd say I take off like the frilly coat, uh, and it dresses down to what is still excessively formal, but with the tuxedo suit mm-hmm. underneath, I'd say it probably fits in more. Because the shirt underneath would be a quite plain one, because it's yeah. meant to just be ease of use and flexibility. So I'd say it, again, looks like somebody would now if they were wandering around in a waistcoat. Uh, mm-hmm. A little bit overdressed, but probably not nearly as much as they did with the coat and tails yeah, right, right, um, right. set up. Be like, well, look, if you'd given me the details to start with, maybe I'd come prepared. I... The less... The less... This couldn't go through official channels. You have to understand. You have to know that. Of course. But you could have given the shark a little bit of information. That would have been a little bit more helpful for the person responsible for protecting your life. Because I assume that is why I'm here. It is indeed why you're here. We are going to hand off some names. We are going to... And she starts waving disrupt all of this the traffic that'd be great we'll get there twice as fast she sits and just like stone 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 no cells your your joke and just dives right back into i have you ever had a change of heart joe ah uh can't say I have. I've pretty much done the same thing forever, working for people like you. Well, I have. <laughs> I've been reading things, I have been watching videos, I've learned things, and this system, all of this, the sling, the ports, the upper crust, this is broken, and I'm going to fix it. That sounds remarkably, uh... What's the goddamn word? Um, what's the opposite of misanthropy? Philanthropic. That's the one. She just raises her eyebrow at the suggestion that this corporate CEO is going to fix the poverty and the the financial disparity of the entire district, uh, something that's ingrained into everything. That's uh, remarkably altruistic of you. You're going to be donating a lot of money for them? Is that, is that what this is? I am we- doing my part. I have been in contact with a citizens action group. I'm going to hand over some names associated with Nexus. Are you aware of an organization called... I lost their name. Hold on. Now, and and I think at this point, actually, uh, Joe just cuts her off. Um, Citizen Action Group, isn't that just a nice way of saying terrorists? No, they're activists. Get serious. (sighs) Right. Are you aware of an organization called the Celestial Celestial Protectorate? Mm, I wish I wasn't. I have an opportunity to hand over some names. People that could... People involved in a drug trade. Right. The Celestial Protectorate... We've been handling a lot of DRM, DMA smuggling. I have a chance to hand over some names of the people involved, disrupt that drug trade, and... In that little tiny way. What exactly do you think that's going to fix? Other than giving Shane a bigger share of the market. What do you mean? I I went to Shane just to get to hire an illicit bodyguard. Shane's only role in this is money. Mm. This is much bigger than Shane. So you're going to fix everybody's problems by taking a couple of dealers out? 
It's bigger than that. The the police capture the dealers. Those dealers turn face. They they turn state's evidence. They they go higher. The entire celestial protectorate goes down. Right. Okay, because I think uh, I think man's uh, I think I misunderstood what she was saying. I think I thought she was selling information to them, not about them. Um, that makes a bit more sense. I this is the first this is the first falling domino in a chain that disrupts the protectorate's stranglehold on the sling and everyone therein. So you think. All of the problems people are living with here are because of an organization that are activists and not just the big old money dogs at the top. That's who we're... That's who we're after. Don't you see? The money dogs mm. at the top fall, then everything changes. Suddenly there's no there's a power vacuum and the people at the bottom can move to the top and suddenly there's a chance at change. Don't you don't you well, don't you see it? I mean it's your it's your money, it's your job, whatever. I'm I'm here to make sure they don't kill you. Yes, that is exactly why you're here, and I, I would ask that you remember that and that you remember Absolutely. your place. I'm quite frankly, you do what you gotta do. I'm just here to make sure it goes smoothly. When we arrive, do you have any kind of contingency plan for them not just cu cutting you open? Just why? I mean, I mean, I have the, you. I mean, beyond me. Just out of curiosity, I was wondering if your whole plan was to just turn up and hope you were going to walk away. Okay. Why do you think I hired security? Well, that's why I was asking. I was just wanting to make sure I have all of the information. If I'm going to be putting things in place, I want to make sure that... Okay, so if I'm going to be running your security for this particular situation, I need to have a bit more control than just being your bodyguard. Um, I'm getting out of the car first. I'm scoping out the scene. And is the driver the only person that knows you're here? Uh, yes, indeed. All right. Uh, when we get there, I leave the car first. You don't Fair. step out until I say, and you follow my lead. Understood. I won't get in the way of your discussion, your handing over the of the information, whatever. That's your business. The car finally breaks from traffic. You take an exit ramp. You go a ways south. Like, you go away, you drive for a while. Outside of the outer upper crust, down to the actual docks, and you drive past the docks that maybe, like, you have done work jobs at. Mm-hmm. Down into... I'm still keeping my little spider bot in the back, by the way, and having it project everything that it sees to my uh, ocular display. Uh, let's make... That's just, like, for the entire drive. Let's make a roll, then, because I'm... Or, or what's... Okay. What is your... Uh, I'm going to make a roll on you then, because I'm going to try to put an adjective sure. on you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your detect? Uh, it is nil, so just the okay. one. Um, you can spend push dice. Your push dice are recharged. You can spend push dice to... Try to up that number if you'd like. So they're they're already completely recharged. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so every dice I spend adds it by uh, raises. Yeah, it by raises one. the difficulty that I'm going to have to roll to put an adjective on you. Right. So if I had a detect of three, you would have to roll three. I have or to higher, roll right? three point one or higher. Yeah. And a point okay. one is um, if I roll two threes, it ups it to three point one. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. Um, sure, I'm going to spend the two because uh, alert objectives. I should, I should probably have thought about the objective alert in relation to detect, but whatever, I didn't. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'll spend two push dice, so the difficulty is three. Okay. I'm going to be rolling three dice for the person that is tracking mm -hmm. you. Spoiler alert, you are being tracked. 
I figured. Uh, I got a four, so I am going to put a fleeting adjective uh, on you of uh, followed. Okay. You you see out of you see out of your spider drone you see in the display. Uh, is it beaming directly into your eye, or is it beaming onto the like the wall of the car or something? The ocular display in the Got cyber it. eye. So you see behind you, uh, as you're pulling off of this exit ramp, a car is fo- like a car also kind of like cuts off two other cars to take the same exit ramp and starts like following you along the highway. Okay. Um. So I don't I don't notice anything specific about the car itself. It's just I, I see that there is a car. It is uh, um, beat up and old. It's not mm-hmm. an upper crust car. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say anything for now. I'm just going to keep an eye out and keep monitoring it as much as I okay. can. Um, yeah. So uh, you get out. Uh, they pull into this old dock where the, the, the docks are made from, like, stone and wood and clay and plaster instead of chrome and steel. There are still neon lights plastered everywhere. You know, there are still there are still TVs and vid displays, but, like, things are made of building materials, not chrome and steel. Sure. People... Um, uh, boats are actually floating in the water. They're not floating overhead. There's maybe one or two of them, but maybe one or two hover boats. But they are old. They're older models. Sure. Um, before I get out of the car, I look at the time and I say to uh, Shia, "So are we, how long are we expected to wait before they show up?" They should already be here. And she points to a warehouse, about two warehouses down. They, supposedly, own this warehouse. We walk in, they should already be there. Right. So... What was your agreement with them in regards to uh, the meeting place? I meet them in the warehouse. Um... Come alone, no cops, etc., and so forth. No, I was encouraged to bring as much no. as much or as little security as I felt I was as I felt was necessary. Simply right. show up. Uh, they would have a conference table arranged. We would we would handle. I would hand over the names, and she re- she's holding. She reveals a briefcase that has been like kind of stashed under her seat. Hard copies, naturally. Information sure. can be tampered with. Mm-hmm. And. They take it and do what they do. Okay, so out of character for just mm-hmm. a second, because I'm, I I want to make sure I'm clear on who are it, like. So who are we meeting? You are meeting the 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 hacker. You are supposedly meeting the hackers and uh like the hacktivists right. who have basically got like converted her to their side and are planning on sure. bringing down this DRM DMA trade by okay. you know doxing um, and police and sure. swatting and all of the other hacker things that people can use to take down these types of people <laughs> okay uh, so the organization that you mentioned before um, the protectorate yeah I, yeah the protectorate those are the ones we're taking down or are those are the those activists? are the the protectorate is the uh we find the exact wording in the the protectorate is the not so secret secret society that runs the docks they handle basically everything illegal okay they are the pseudo they fancy themselves the illuminati but really they're just sort of rich rich crime bosses gotcha okay um yeah, I was just trying to get a sense of whether or not this car that is following us, been following us, um, was likely to be a tail to make sure we were following through, or if some, someone who is uh, trying to stop us. So on the way here, I haven't seen them making any kind of hostile actions they've just they've been just been us, tailing right? you you can actually give me a sure. roll though to put an okay. analyze or put something on them using detect to essentially 
figure out yeah. who they are to study them basically yeah okay cool uh i'm just gonna use the one okay. for now because i only have one push dice left uh <laughs> that's a one so i don't think that's that's going anywhere it is not no <laughs> uh i have no idea who's in that car um okay so i'm gonna get out of the car um hmm and uh, prime your detect for if you take time to uh, heal it. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, let's see. Because <laughs> if you fail a roll, you get the opportunity to increase that roll later. I just have to remember how that works. Right. I'll just put a dice on there to remind myself that it's primed. Um Ending adjectives and advancing verbs. Oh, that's only if you get a negative adjective. Yeah, I thought it yeah. might have been like when I get hurt yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in that case, um, I get out of the car and I uh, say to the driver, um, why don't you just pull up next to the warehouse by the uh, nearest entrance? I'm going to have a look around. Okay. Uh, he kind of gives you, like, a stink eye for a minute, and then, like, a salute, and he goes to do exactly as you said. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, yeah, I'm gonna do my best to scope out the nearby area. Um, I'm gonna try and keep the car... Oh, actually, no, you know what? I'm just gonna leave the spider bot in the okay. car. Um... And basically just give the area in general a scope out um, to get a sense of, see if I can find anywhere that would have a a lookout style position of the warehouse windows, um, that sort of thing. Is, that, is there only the one building here or are there multiple? There's, I assume it's like a warehouse yeah, lot. Yeah, it's like a warehouse so. lot. There are row, like, you know, rows of warehouses. The docks are connected to them so boats can pull up and unload boxes. Um, what about this car? Presumably there's, uh, getting out this far, I assume the traffic will have died yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were um, able to pretty easily so the, follow you. Yeah, so at this point, how far behind was the car when I was watching it? Closer. And for that matter, has it, did it stop following us at some point, or seem like it started to try and hang back, or was it just not bothering to try and hide the fact that it was following? Not bothering to try and hide the fact that it was following closer than it should have been you get the vibe that, yeah. that like to a professional like you this feels a little bit maybe not careless so much as Blase. yeah <laughs> yeah we okay um under underestimating is almost the word i would use okay hmm. and you still see the car like two warehouses back they they hung back a little bit when you got to the warehouse lot but there yeah. you can still see it. Okay. So they, they've parked up kind of thing, but uh, does it, well, have I noticed anybody get out of the car? Or does it, has it just stopped and is it the motor still running? Uh, motor off, just sitting. No one's gotten out of it. Okay. Though. Um, hmm. Given that I'm just one person, there's not a lot of preparation that I can do to protect the area. So I'm... Given that the car's pulled right up to the building, I'm just going to go... Uh, our car mm -hmm. is pulled right up to the building. I'm just going to go uh, over, open the door, and standing between the door... So <laughs> I'm opening the door away from the car so that essentially I'm, I'm body shielding between the door and the building. Sure, sure, sure. I'm just saying, go on, get in. She gets out, and the second she gets out, you see from a, in it from the distance that door open. You don't get a clear look of the like the, the car door from the distance. You see it open, and two figures get out. You don't yeah. get a clean look at them, but mm -hmm. you see two people get out of the car and start moving in your direction. All right, uh, I <laughs> recall my spider bot, mm -hmm. um, and. For now, I'm just going to take it with me. Okay. And <laughs> go into the building ahead of her and use my sonar and thermal imaging. Although, actually, I can't use them both, can I? Um, yeah, you can. There's no reason you can't. 
Oh, just because I don't have enough push dice to count for each of those. Um, well, they, your push but, dice would, re- I mean, I'm just would gonna... recharge before an action, so you could absolutely like push both of them. Okay. I Right, I see. Uh, in that case, I, I thought it was a case of once they were ch- discharged, you couldn't reuse them. Um, Not until you recharge them bad. by taking a new action. Right, okay. Gotcha, okay. Um... In that case, yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead in the the building again, walking in front of her and just try and scope out the area. Um, she said that she's expecting them to sort of just be sitting in there at a board table. Uh, is that the case? There are there are three people uh, at the board, like at a board table, uh, dressed. Sure. In that case, dressed almost sorry. ostentatiously lower class. <laughs> I love that. That's. The visual of that is like, ridiculous. Um, you know, mo- movie extra, movie extra cyberpunk uh, civilians is how I would describe it. Like they are, they're they're, they're wearing really old coats yeah. and like stuff that they picked up at a charity store kind of yeah. thing. Um, this guy's wearing a set of dungarees. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. Um, so in that case, if there are three people at the table, I want to scope out the area again using the uh, sonar and thermal imaging, and I'll push two dice for that, um, to try and figure out, basically check the rest of the area surrounding to see if there are anybody, uh, see if there's anybody hiding out. Okay. Uh, I assume that's a detect. Uh, that is one Perfect. six. Um, do you want to... Um... You've got them. You you've got them spotted. We'll put spotted as the adjective. Sure. Do you want it fleeting, sticky, or locked? Uh, how many people have I spotted? Uh, you have spotted two. There are two people, kind of two people, like hanging about in like amongst the boxes that are clearly out of view. Hmm. Um. Do I see them? <sighs> Do they look like they're holding weapons, or are they just hiding? They sure what do look I... like they're holding weapons. I suppose... Do I get a sense of whether or not... So, uh, they're, they're hiding out in boxes. Are they kind of like... Hmm. I just don't think... I, I think I don't like this in general. Uh... So, I, I think... What sort of position are they in? Because I, I, in my head, there's standing and being ready in case something goes wrong, and then there's standing and ready in ambush would be slightly different. They, um, what I will say, well, what I'll say is this. Sure. To take the time to really study it, it would, it, you would, you would need a sticky adjective. You know what? Instead, I am just going to, uh call out so as as she walks into the building behind me i'm going to put my arm out to stop her and i'm just going to shout out so are you guys all alone it's just the three of you and um give me a give me a coax roll for that recharge your push dice cool uh i'm gonna use the one because i have four so it's one plus the three yep. Dots, right? Yeah, so there's, uh, yeah. Okay, so there's two sixes. Okay. Um, and three twos. Okay. Um, you have, uh, outsmarted them. <laughs> or, uh, even go, like, what is your, is your approach here to call them out, to, like, rile them up, to expose the fact that you know what they're doing, to kind of, like, where, what are you after? Give me the adjective that you're putting yeah. on the people that are hiding. Um, yeah, probably goaded. Goaded is good. Sticky, uh, sticky, fleeting, or, or locked? Fleeting, because I just okay. need to know, <laughs> have them reveal themselves, basically. Two security guards walk out with uh, submachine guns, and the young man uh, sitting at the table like puts out his hands and says, you brought security, so we brought security. This is only fair. Hey, I just want er- everybody's cards should be on the table. Everyone's. I'm happy for you guys to have your 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 little backups, but let's be you know if we're gonna this is gonna be a nice clean conversation. People shouldn't be hiding in boxes. That's fair. 
Let's, no, let's... that's fair. No cloak and dagger nonsense. This is, and he leans forward, a straightforward interaction. That's the way I'd like to keep it. Now, before we continue, there is a beat-up looking car that has been following us from the city and I would really like it if you would send some of your security to go check it out unless those are your guys uh, I'm going to make a. I'm gonna make an adjective on you I'm going to try to put an adjective on you okay. uh, this is I'm going to try to put an adjective on you um, this is going to be against your um, I think this is against your coax, if I'm trying to outsmart you. If I'm trying to sure. bluff you, I think this is coax against coax. So that's, do I have the default one and then the three markers? Uh, you have, yeah, you have, you have, you have pl- uh, four total. You can spend, if you have any push dice that you didn't spend on your last action, you can use those to up that further. Uh, yeah, I will add one push okay. dice to that. So that's a total of five. Okay. Uh, that is a failure on their part. I rolled a four. So, uh, yeah. the He smiles, and here's what happens. He smiles for... You get the briefest glimpse of a corner-of-the-mouth smile. As he kind of, like... And then kind of gets a real concerned look on his face of, like, Wait, you were followed? Okay, no, no, no. Uh, Rose... Joni, go take care of whoever was following us. This is a problem. And the two submachine gun carrying heavies, like, walk out. And this is what, this is the other thing that you figure out as as you get the sense that you're being bullshitted. Yeah. (laughs) I, I, I thought that might be the case. It's just like, oh, so I've just sent two heavies away, so I'm supposed to feel like, hey, this is, this is better now. But in actual fact, they're probably just setting us up in that regard. Um, when have you worked? You, you for a brief second, recognize the guy in front of you. You, you realize this is Byron Belonga, part of an organization called the Adler Set. They are neo-Victorian blackmail artists. Right. They fancy themselves hacktivists. They fancy themselves agents of change. <laughs> but part of it is they fancy themselves as that to lure to get gullible rich people to show up to bilk them sure. out of money. Um, I'm going to set my spider bot. If if I can casually set my spider bot down, um, and set it basically to just go outside to the car. I'm going to ask for a with I'm going to ask for a prowl sure. roll to put an adjective of like hidden. Sure. And is that a new action for Yeah, that's going to recharge or? your push dice and this is going to be against a 3. Uh well, I was just going to use two push dice, so uh, so I got two threes and a Perfect. one. Perfect, you got a 3.1, so you have succeeded. Do you want, uh... Sweet. We will say this is, um... Distracted, as as now Shia... Now uh, Byron and Shia are starting to, like, write out, uh... Like, are starting to, like, hash out business terms. Do you want this to be sticky, sure. fleeting, or locked? Um, so this was actually going to be before I was going to let Shia... Oh, okay. Um, go. Um... Because I wanted to sort of turn as though I was just talking to Shia, uh, and drop the spider bot. Okay, perfect. Either either way, yeah, either way With they're distracted. It, yeah, like, sure. Uh, and I want to say to Shia, you want to be careful with this lot. I'm not well. This may not be what you think it is. And she kind of just shoulders past you and sits at the table. Yeah, <laughs> of course she does. Um, so obviously I want to set the spider bot out of the, uh, out of the warehouse and, uh, on the car Mm -hmm. of the driver, again, facing a, a, away from any areas that he wouldn't be able to see himself. 
And basically, I want to keep an eye out for the security that has been sent to get the people that were following us. Okay. Give me a... Assuming that they've been set to do anything. Uh, what's your detect? This is going to... You're not going to have your push dice that you've spent because you're not taking a new action. Somebody is going to try and sure. put a hidden adjective or put a... Yeah. An adjective on um, you. So my, my standard detect is uh, just one. So I will use my last push dice okay. to make that two. I'm going to be rolling three dice. That's two sixes. <laughs> of course uh, it is. Oh, well. They have put a misdirected, a fleeting misdirected adjective on you. Basically, if you take okay. an action to study the surroundings, you can figure out yep. where they where they've gone off to. But for now, you are hurt. You have a negative adjective on you. Uh, your and you don't see them. They're gone. All right. If the, if I can't see them from the car, that's all that matters for now. Okay. Um, yeah, because I have to take a separate action to do anything about mm -hmm. that, right? Um, so would a separate action be if I'm just having the spider bot project anything to my Oculus screen? If I just continue uh, set it back up to do that, would that be a separate action? Or it would. would it would be... require. What I'll say is, it would require. Sure. Um, Taking your, it would require taking your spider bot off of sentry mode and putting it onto like active search. Active yeah. looking, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Then you've got your, you've got that negative adjective as they will have theoretically have the jump on you. Cool. Perfect. I love it. Cool. Uh, so in that case, so she sat down to talk business. Um, the three people at the table are they all the people that she? Uh, are any do any of them appear to be security or no these just appear to be other kind of like representatives business yeah okay cool um in that case knowing the person that she's dealing with i'm going to yeah i'm just going to move closer and not look like I'm eavesdropping but be eavesdropping um so presumably that would be a prowl thing yeah, again yeah yeah um so, yeah, I, I'm just going to sidle on... Well, not sidle, I'm going to make my presence mm -hmm. known. Um, but just be within arm's reach of the table. Um, and keeping an ear out for my idiot CEO boss. Um, they have not taken an action to avoid being, like, misdirected. And now, like, they're still talking business. So you'll sure. get, you get a bonus dice for that. Uh, you okay, also cool. get, or rather, you can spend a push dice for that in addition to everything else that you've got. Right, okay. Um, so, I mean, so. Oh, no, wait, I rolled. It would no, still wait, cost sorry, me a push. Let me re say all of that because I got it. <laughs> uh, they're going to be rolling okay. a hurt dice because they are. No, blah, blah, blah. keep getting things wrong. This is, this is absurd. It's all right. Uh, their thing drops <laughs> by. Their, their difficulty drops by one because they have a negative adjective right. on a reaction. Uh, okay. because they are distracted. Uh, right. However, you are also going to be rolling a hurt dice because you have this fleeting adjective of, like, misdirected. Sure, okay. Uh, so that... And this is a new action, so I you have, have my push dice back. back. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, uh, I am going to... Hmm. I'm going to say um, that I'm going to use my patient mm -hmm. to justify basically standing and listening for the right bit of information that's going to make me... I'm looking for the information that tells me whether or not they're just buying time in this situation or if they're actually trying to talk business sure. with her. Knowing Byron as I f do in whatever way, um, I'll use a push dice for that. Um, and... Do -do 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 -do. I would say yeah, that, that's all, right. all I'm going to do for now. So uh, got... And so one hurt dice and two regular yes, dice. And you've got to beat a four. Okay, so the hurt dice was a okay. three. Uh, my regular dice was a four and my push dice was a Perfect. six. Perfect, you got a six. So presumably... Okay, cool. Um, so the hurt dice cancels out any numbers that it equals, Yeah, it would right? cancel out any threes. Right. That Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so that's a six. Okay. 
Um, do you want uh, fleeting sticky or locked? Um, uh, for Eve's, I'm going to make that one sticky. Yeah, because I want to essentially listen to the whole conversation and then, um, again, be trying to pick out an information that will clue me into whether or not they're buying time or if they're actually making a genuine effort okay. here. Um, yeah, then you overhear the whole conversation. And cool. you can call on that. You can call on this anytime as long as they don't take a take as long as they don't actively work towards treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you have overheard the whole conversation. They're definitely spinning their wheels. It's all sorts of right. It's a lot of prolestatizing. It's a lot of like you're doing great. You know, it's a lot of like pep talk sure. shit. It's they're okay. very clearly buying time. So, in that case, as soon as I pick up on that and realize that, I'm going to set my sentry, um, my sentry spider, to start more actively searching the area, perhaps climbing off the car and onto the side of the wall of the warehouse by the door that we came in through, um, to look around more actively. Um, as my action to try and <laughs> get rid of the adjective... And this is when I'm going to put an adjective on you. So this is a new action on my part, uh, This right? is a reaction on your part, so you only get push dice that you haven't spent All right, yet. okay. Sure. Uh, this is going to be... I'm going to... I'm going to make this prowl. One last prowl roll before things get hot. <laughs> All right. Actually, but I'm also um... going to tell you something before I make this roll. Okay. You pick up on something that, on something that, uh, you don't just hear what Byron is talking about. You hear something that, yeah, his associate, uh, Key Elliot, Key Elliot. You hear Key kind of offhandedly mention like, yeah, Chain was, Chain was right. This is fantastic. This is, this is a bigger job than we expected. And that's when I'm going to make a prowl roll to see if they get the jump on you for when they start shooting. <laughs> right. So what's your prowl difficulty? Uh, my prowl is one, so I'll spend the one push dice I have left and make it okay. two. Well, they got a, they got a 4.1, so they're definitely going to put... <laughs> and they're going to put a sticky adjective on you, so you're going to get your third push dice back and have a sticky adjective of um, ambushed on you so you've so you've got a sticky you've got a sticky adjective on you that is ambushed they mm -hmm. have they right. have sprung their trap on you thoroughly <laughs> which is just so stupid because i saw it coming you saw this coming. entire time i'm they like just... you know what sometimes you gotta let the bricks fall that's the the cave collapses sometimes the cave collapses try to make sure no one dies <laughs> All right, uh, so I'm ambushed. Do four people? How do I note that on myself? Uh, um, on your at on your protagonist sheet, you're going to mark it under adjectives, and you're going to mark that uh, the minus box with one of those little boxes on the side filled in. Okay. And cool. until you uh, treat so... that, which is um, you essentially, uh, I believe you'd make a. Let me double check that. I believe you just make a roll. You have to make a roll to like remove it. Sure. Yeah, you have to you have to essentially uh make a treat roll to mend it and then it goes away. Okay. But for now, they uh from two uh from a pair of side doors along a second floor catwalk, right? Sure. They kick in the door two people on each side with machine guns. And they point down at you, and Shia kind of kicks back and starts like slapping in your arm, like "What's happening? What's ha what's happening? What's happening?" Do uh, are they kind of just holding us at gunpoint, or do they look like they're readying to actually fire? Just holding you at gunpoint. And shoot down. Okay. Uh, in that case, I just turn to Shia. Shia, shut up. And I look at Byron. Security, huh? Just security. You might mind if we leave then? Well, 
and he kind of leans forward. He takes the briefcase. He closes it. He locks it. Shia kind of like starts to protest and starts to like try to push past you to like get the briefcase back. What do you do? Hey, Shia, remember how I said my only job here was to make sure you didn't die? Yes. Okay, fine. Sit down. Shut up. Fine. Now, Byron, um, I assume that's all you're here for? No, no, we're here for much, much more than this. You see, we're in a bad way, and we need some creds quick. And uh, holding a CEO uh, hostage, it's big money, bro, quick. That's that's not going to work for me. Well, we thought that we... We kind of, well, I should say, Chain thought that you might think that, which is why I'm prepared to make the following offer. Turn around. Walk out. All debts are cleared. Mm, what debts, exactly? Every debt that you've, every debt to Chain that you've got, every cred that you owe him. Oh, that's right. Hang on a moment. <laughs> out of character moment. I didn't make the... Because I keep thinking of uh, Chain as Chain. Oh, right. Um, and so <laughs> I was thinking C-H-A-I-N when you said that, and so I didn't make that connection of... Um, then I'll re- re- right. restate that real quick. No, 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 that's, it's okay. I, I, I'm now up to speed, so I understand this is the situation I'm in. Um, yeah, but here's the thing. It's only three creds at that point, so I'm not really sure that that's a great offer. Well... You could also not take the offer and... I mean, you could make it more worth my while. And Shia is shooting daggers. <laughs> Shia, you want to raise my payment? He's offering ten. What you got? I... Is it worth your life? <sighs> Byron is like, cla- sits back and claps like, that's the spirit, my friend. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, excellent. Shia uh, is just Hey, I'm I'm I've I spent a lot of time at auctions recently. I've got a bit of a bidding war fever. I can't believe you're I can't believe you're doing that. If you I can You should have brought more than one person, I'm just saying. I trusted You you should have come to me directly so I could actually get our security team behind us. How the hell do you think one person is going to take care of And then I punch him in the face. Okay, good. <laughs> give, me that, uh, give me that roll. That's going to be a fight roll. Yeah. Uh, to put an adjective on so him. I, I, <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying, <laughs> I'm like just standing in front of Shia being like, how the hell do you expect one person to take on, like... And as I'm wildly swinging my arms around to indicate all of these guys, I swing Perfect. it into his face with my cyber arm. Um, so, uh, fight is three, and my cyber arm is my cyber yep. arm. Um, it is strong. I am going to punch him in the face with it. All right, give me four dice. You want to get a 4.1. Uh, that is a six. All right. Uh, sticky, sticky, fleeting, or locked? Uh... Oh wait, give me a give me a give me one hurt dice. Uh roll a dice and whatever number it whatever number it rolls, that number disappears from any dice that match it. Alright, okay. Uh Okay, two. you're fine then. Sticky uh sticky fleeting or locked. It's... Um what is, what adjective am I putting on him? Just punched? uh depends on what if sticky a uh, fleeting is uh on his back or fleeting is on his back, sticky is broken nose. Locked is unconscious. How hard are you punching this guy? <laughs> Probably pretty hard because it's my cyber arm. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put two on him and just go straight to unconscious. Okay. Uh, then uh, what hmm. happens next is. Uh, Guns start firing, but uh, because he's unconscious, like, people also scramble to get Byron because he's unconscious. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't grab the briefcase. I grab Shia 
and hoist her out of the chair. Okay. Assuming that she didn't no, get no, up yeah, already. No, I made, her, I made her sit down. <laughs> she's abs- I'll, I'll say she's standing um, up, so like if you go somewhere, sure. she's going to go with you just because she's scrambling. Yeah. Um, in that case, yeah, I grab her and start running, um, just dragging her along mm-hmm. with me if she can't keep up and doing my best to keep my body between her and the goons. Um, All right, give, as the guns are going wild. Give me wild. a move roll. They're going to oppose it with their shoot. Or rather, what is you? Yeah, um... So I still have my ambushed hurt yes. dice, and uh, so my move is two. Yes, and I have all my you have all your uh, push dice. Push dice back. Okay, uh, so two, and I will use one push dice for. That. Okay, so my hurt dice is two, but my highest dice is five. Okay, uh, you've got cover. Cool. Uh, well, sticky, you can have cover, or you can have high or ad- like an advantage. Sure. Um, if you hand over that third dice. Oh, well, I've only used one. Oh, I thought you dice. used. Oh, you're I, right. You I, made it. No, I, my my default is two, and then I used one to make it three. So I rolled three dice plus a hot right, dice. and then you gave me two um, sticky. You gave you gave me two push dice when you made it when you knocked him out. Sorry, right, yes, I understand what you're saying. Okay, um, yeah, so I can't... Oh, no, I can't... Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say we weave between the boxes to get to the door, um, if we want to make that cover, I guess. Okay, I'll take that, I'll take yep. that third dice. Uh, they... It's just a fleeting, oh, because... Fle- yeah, fleeting's yeah. fine. Um, okay, yeah. then I'm going to, uh, try and put an adjective of you on, of shot... Uh, they're gonna roll a hurt dice because they've got because their boss is unconscious. Mm-hmm. Uh, their hurt dice is four, so any fours I'm gonna ignore. They're going to be rolling a uh, shoot, and they've got a stinger pistol, and they are aggressive. So I'm rolling five dice. Uh, what is your move? Uh, two. Well, they got a six. But they used the <laughs> they used all of their push dice, so they don't they can only make it fleeting. So you sure. are, um, we'll say grazed, or you've got a fleeting adjective of pinned down. We'll say. Okay, that makes sense because yeah, uh, so we're we are currently pinned down behind the cover which we sought out so wildly. So uh, <laughs> she turns to Shia. So remember when I said this didn't seem like it might be, or that it seemed like it might not be what you thought it was? You feel stupid yet? I just get me out of here. I'll pay whatever debts you've got. Just get me the hell out of here. Hmm. Um. I am going to try and treat my ambushed, okay. if I yes. can, by um again <laughs> using my spider bot outside to try and get an angle on these guys and make sure there isn't make sure the driver's still breathing yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. find a way find so, a way out basically yeah exactly um do, do, do. so what do i roll for I, this one let's see uh, let me find it mending adjectives uh, sticky adjectives require mending. Physical roll, make a treat roll. Okay, so it is actually treat that I roll. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, so I roll my, still roll my hurt dice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. And you want a beta four. Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, well, actually, no, that's fine. So my hurt dice was a six. And I rolled two sixes, but I also rolled Perfect. a five. So, you, uh, so you, um, yeah, you're able to scope it out. You can see that, like, they've put all of their, their that, like, if you can just run back without getting shot, you've got a clear, a clear mm-hmm. shot at the car. Uh, the driver is unconscious but breathing. He's been like Focus. pistol whipped. You just have to yeah. get to the car, and you can get out of here. Right. Cool. Um. In that case, uh, she just turns to Shia, uh, stay low, get to the edge of that cover by the door, and I am going to be right behind you, and basically just trying to get us both 
weaving through the cover to the door. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't really carry guns. It's not my style. So um, what I'm going to do instead, actually, is whilst I tell her head down towards the door, is I'm going to look around and see if I can find just a solid looking thing, whether it's a box or um, a steel bar or anything I can get my hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to grab it, hoist it, and toss it at the gunman on the opposite ledge I'll let you, uh, above I'll us. I'll let you spend a push dice for... for Because this is going to be a move roll to get to your car. I'll let you spend a push dice for strong as you throw something at the gun. At the gun. At the, the, at the heavies. Okay. So, um... So, when I treated before, yep. that was to... You got rid of... You got rid of ambushed, so you no longer are rolling any hurt yep. dice. Okay, cool. So I have... Uh, I still ha- do. I still you still have my push dice from the unconscious. Yes, or? I have not made anything sticky okay. yet. No, I made something. I made cool. no. Uh, I still have your two push dice from unconscious. Yes. Okay, that's that's all I was checking. Cool. Uh, so what is this roll then? Is this fight? Uh, this is gonna be. Or? I'll let you do fight, fight or move, whichever's higher. Yeah, fight. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna roll my fight. I'm not gonna use okay. push dice. You want um, to beat a two, three. You want to be a three. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, <laughs> so I rolled two three. Okay, you got a three point uh, one. Uh, is it? Sweet. Are you gonna make it fleeting? Are they uh, scrambling for cover or sticky? Uh, I'm going to make it sticky as uh, distracted or. I don't know. Um, I guess it depends what I what I found to throw. I'll say you threw a, you threw a crate. You have a super strong robot arm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I want the guy to. Uh, I wonder. Throw. A, could we? How far of a stretch would it be to say it was a crate of flammables? I'll buy. I'll 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 let I'll let him I'll let him be on fire. You're making your escape. This is <laughs> this is the end of the this is the end of the encounter. So like this is pretty much end game. Right. So if you want to light him on fire. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, not, not even necessarily to light him on fire so much as just wreak havoc. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, yes, I, whatever it is, I want scrambling. it to be sticky. I want him to not be shooting Great. at us. Yeah, exactly. They are scrambling. Um, you make it outside. You have to, like, push aside the, the driver who is unconscious or at least shake him to wake him up. Super strong robot arm. I just shove him out of his seat onto the other and side. And you make your way out. Um... She uh, reluctantly pulls out her phone and pays off and like forwards you ten creds, knowing that you're not going to get the money from Chena. Yeah. And the la- but the last thing that happens is in your eye, you get a call from Chena, who just says, mm-hmm. "You know that this puts you on my shit list, right?" When was I ever not? <laughs> You know, I I really like you. I'm going to be real sad and I have to kill you. Well, the feeling's mutual, buddy. Don't you worry about it. And the limo speeds off back towards the upper crust. And we get another one of those sleeping shots over all of the Kilimanjaro sling. And that's Tech Noir. Woohoo! That was very good. I'm a big fan of that. I, I enjoyed that. Ray, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. This was a blast. Thank you so much for having me, man. It was a, it was a good time. So, real quick, before we wrap up, where can people find you and your work online? Uh, you can find the podcast at Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn or tftddi.co.uk uh, for both of those. And you can also find us at Dark Dragons Inn, do- no, Dark Dragons Inn on Twitter. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was an absolute delight. And I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take a future, me. Thanks, past me. And thanks again to Ray for coming on to the show. That game was so much fun. Be sure to check out Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn at Tales from the Dark Dragons Inn. That's T-I-I-L-S from the Dark Dragons Inn dot co dot U-K. And be sure to check out more information about Tech Noir by heading over to technoirrpg.com. You can also follow Ray on Twitter at Dark Dragons Inn. Then while you're on Twitter... Follow this show at Party of One Pod, then slide on over to Facebook and like the show at Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. Then head over to bit.ly slash Party of One Discord, join our Discord community, talk with us about 
role-playing games, professional wrestling, the show, all of those things that people like to talk about. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a social media shout-out, or a word-of-mouth recommendation. All of those things help new listeners find the show, which helps us grow bigger and do cooler and better things. And also, you know, sometimes you're just having a rough day, and somebody sends you a nice tweet about the podcast you make, and it just makes your whole day better. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, you can also consider backing us on Patreon at patreon.com slash partyofonepodcast. If you listened to that episode and you thought to yourself, ah, oh, I just wish I had another 45 minutes to an hour of Jeff Stormer just talking into my earphones. Boy, howdy, do I have a podcast for you. All My Fantasy Children is a storytelling, character creation, and world building podcast powered by you. Every week, my best friend Aaron Catano Saez and I take a listener prompt and spin it into an epic fantasy tale, populating a shared fantasy universe one character at a time. New episodes drop every Friday at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is, as always, produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Mega Rain, featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you're interested in coming onto the show, whether you are a podcaster, game designer, professional wrestler, writer, actor, musician, magician, or you just love a good role-playing game, you can shoot me an email at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. Never gonna die.